Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased that we're starting the process to reform and reauthorize the National Flood Insurance Program early so that we have enough time to fix this complex program once and for all for 231,000 New Jerseyans. This is an incredibly important program, as we saw in Sandy. And in the aftermath of Sandy, I saw firsthand all the problems with the program and the work that needs to be done. Sandy was a natural disaster, but the delays, the denials, the disputes they encountered throughout the flood insurance claims process, that was a man-made disaster. The arbitrary rules, inflexible deadlines, the gaping loopholes, the gotcha clauses, the chronic underpayments, the constant runaround. So with this experience fresh in mind, I'm eager to lay out uh, the reforms that I hope the committee will fight for in the days and weeks ahead. Certainly I will. Now, my goal is to make the flood insurance program simple, affordable, fair, efficient, and accountable to consumers and taxpayers. Americans deserve a program that is sustainable for taxpayers, affordable for homeowners, and accountable to everyone. Now, I'd like to follow up on Senator Kennedy's uh, questions about the Nielsen firm. Uh, in the aftermath of Sandy, thousands of New Jerseyans faithfully paid their flood insurance programs for years, often decades, uh, without ever making a claim, and then had the rug pulled underneath uh, from them when they were significantly underpaid by FEMA's private insurance contractors. And the appeals process, which was fundamentally broken at the time, many were forced to go through the frustrating, time-consuming, and expensive process of going to court to get what they were entitled to. FEMA's private counsel for more than 90% of the cases, the Nielsen Law Firm, did everything in its power to drag out the proceedings, draining time, resources, and money from Sandy victims who had little to spare of each. Rather than work in the interest of justice, the Nielsen Law Firm filed countless frivolous motions seeking to run up their legal firms, which Nielsen himself bragged would surpass $100 million. To add insult to injury, these millions of dollars came partially from the very policyholders he was fighting in court. He dealt with Sandy victims like they were the perpetrators, enriching himself at their expense, bullying, scaring people out of court, hiding documents. And when they finally got caught and were excoriated by a federal judge, for a, quote, shocking effort to curtail inquiry and a level of admonishment rarely seen in federal litigation, uh, the judge said, I find the counsel for right violated its obligations to comply with the court's discovery orders, unreasonably prolonging the litigation, imposing unnecessary costs on plaintiffs, further contributing to unwarranted delays. There's not a morsel of regret by that firm. So my knowledge, this law firm is still representing white, right your owns and losses. Isn't that true, Mr. Wright? That is my understanding as well. And how, so a firm with such a troubled and possibly illegal past can be given the opportunity to represent FEMA even though they have such a record? Um, yes, sir. Well, uh, so telling me, that, you're telling me that FEMA doesn't have hiring and firing authority for these attorneys, even though FEMA is on the hook financially and has its reputation on the line? We don't. Instead, what we have is two things. In the aftermath of Sandy, and um, you were involved with my predecessors to move much of this along the road, FEMA withdrew all of the cases so that we could personally manage those with our staff. And secondly, we changed the way by which the litigation oversight took its place going forward. Would giving FEMA the authority to choose or at the very least approve of private attorneys representing them help you control legal sp expenses and speed up the resolution of lawsuits? I think it's one of the elements so that we need to look at. Let me ask you in a different context. Uh, write your own. FEMA contracts with private insurance companies to sell and service its flood insurance policies despite taking on none of the risk. These write your owns, as they're known, reap significant profits from the program. In fact, uh, estimates show that the right your owns pocketed more than 43 cents of every dollar in premiums in the year Sandy hit. That's an awful lot of money for an insurance company that doesn't bear any of the risk. Is it appropriate for these private companies that have no skin in the game to receive more than a third of all premiums collected? Um, Mr. Menendez, we need to pull down the costs. We need to make all of this far more efficient. I would want to highlight for you, though, as we look at compensation, that you know, as we look at the standard compensation of 30 and a half cents, the first 15 to 17 cents go to agents who are small business owners uh, in, in your state. 
I want to make sure that we're fair to them. They are the sales force we need on the ground. Uh, we then look at the state taxes. We also pay out of that. So I can look at the dimensions of it. Uh, you guys have directed us in the last cycle to change this. We are in the process of taking that on from rulemaking. Uh, we've collaborated with the Government Accountability Office, whose report on this, I think, in December, uh, is one that I've learned quite a bit from. Uh, but to simply say it, sir, we need to pull down the costs. We need to make this more efficient as we go forward. Well, Mr. Chairman, 43 cents on every dollar to a private insurance company that's not on the hook for anything doesn't seem to me to be a system that ultimately works in the interest of the taxpayer. I have a lot more questions. I'll submit them for the record.